the preparations for Starship Flight 3 are definitely intensifying. It's exciting to see Booster B-10 returning to the launch pad after undergoing fixes at the production site. But the chopsticks' assistance, B-10 was securely positioned, ready for the upcoming tests, including the crucial wet res rehearsal. However, the completion of the wet res rehearsal test requires the presence of S-28 alongside B-10. This is the time for stacking. After over a day since Booster B-10 was moved to the launch pad. From the production site, its companion S-28 has just arrived. On February 27, the transport stand and Marvin Crane approached the pad B test stand, indicating that S-28 was about to be moved after a week on the test stand. Although work around S-28 is underway, including the positioning of its transport stand and the readiness of the Marvin Crane, S-28 has yet to be lifted onto the transport stand. The announcement of the new road closure schedule for February 29th certainly adds to the hype. The road closure schedule provided by Cameron County signaled this significant event, and the smooth transportation process of the B-10 back to the launch pad is a promising development. This was further confirmed when SpaceX received two three-hour road closure timeframes on February 29th. At that point, S-28 was the most likely prototype at Starbase to be moved. And indeed, on the morning of February 29th, around 921. CST, S-28 officially rolled by the transport stand straight to the launch pad. This process happened quite rapidly, taking only about 20 minutes, which means S-28 arrived at the OLM around 9.40 a.m. Upon arrival, it was immediately positioned in the middle of the chopstick, indicating that S-28 would soon be stacked on the B-10. However, at the time of making this video, S-28 had not yet been stacked. The delay is believed to be related to the Mechazilla arm system, as images showed engineers being lifted to inspect this chopstick. However, this problem doesn't appear too serious, as no significant updates related to the system have been reported. S-28 is expected to be stacked onto the booster soon in preparation for the important wet dress rehearsal test. Nonetheless, the delivery of two large cryogenic methane tanks to the launch site further emphasizes the ongoing preparations for the upcoming test. With each step forward, the anticipation for Starship Flight 3 continues to build, and it's evident that the team is diligently working towards ensuring the success of this milestone mission. With Booster B-10 already positioned on the launch pad, the focus now shifts to S-28, there are indeed two possibilities for the movement of S-28. One possibility is that it will be transported directly to the launch pad to be stacked with B-10 indicating readiness for the wet res rehearsal test. Alternatively, S-28 could be moved to the production site for potential fixes related to previous wet res rehearsal tests. Both possibilities hold significance, and the outcome will depend on various factors regarding the readiness of S-28 and any identified issues that may need to be addressed before proceeding with further tests. Speaking of this test, SpaceX experienced two failures in mid-February. This resulted in the two stages being de-stacked and relocated. Within Starbase, Booster B-10 was rolled to the production site for repairs behind the doors of Mega Bay 1. Meanwhile, S-20 was moved to test stand pad B with a plan to conduct a static fire test. However, S-28 only underwent another test, the spin prime a few days ago. This indicates that SpaceX has ensured reliability with the new engines. Despite being rolled to the test pad last week and undergoing a spin prime on February 28, it has yet to proceed with a static fire. This test is crucial for ensuring flight safety and it's possible that S-28 may return to the test stand for this purpose before the scheduled launch date. The pace of preparations is expected to accelerate rapidly, with the FAA closing the investigation into the IFT-2 mishap on February 26, signaling progress towards IFT-3 and environmental assessments conducted by other groups at Starbase. SpaceX is likely in the final stages of completing necessary assessments. Elon Musk's estimates suggest that IFT-3 could launch in the second week of March, mid-March, pending official launch approval from the FAA. Now, the most crucial task will be the wet dress rehearsal test. It will serve as important preparation for SpaceX to receive a launch license from the FAA. I believe only if the test is successful will be FAA officially approve the launch. Meanwhile, all other processes seem to be progressing smoothly.
the FAA just concluded the IFT-2 mishap investigation, and other. Organizations have also arrived at Starbase to complete final environmental assessments. One is racing against time to ensure that Starship Flight 3 can take place as soon as possible, with the best-case scenario being the second week of March, as Musk mentioned. Flight 3 will be the first Starship flight this year. After two flights in 2023, 2024 is expected to be a year when Starship will develop strongly, with plans for four to five flights or even nine flights as recently revealed by the FAA. But no matter how many flights there are, Flight 3 will still be the key to unlocking everything. This will even affect another important plan, Starship HLS, SpaceX is continuously ramping up to have the best preparations for. This mission after the schedule was pushed back to September of 2026. Last year, SpaceX conducted many tests with the system, notably testing the elevator system. Recently besides activities at Starbase, SpaceX and NASA had important tests with the Starship docking system. Specifically, engineers from both organizations spent 10 days at Johnson Space Center completing over 200 docking scenarios with Starship hardware. The tests involved hardware from the Starship lander and NASA's Orion spacecraft connected together using various approach angles and speeds. NASA officials stated that these real-world results, utilizing full-scale hardware, will validate computer models of the moon landers. Docking System To date, Starship has not yet achieved Earth orbit, however the newly tested docking system has shown many positive signs. It is fundamentally based on the docking system that SpaceX uses. For Dragon on ISS resupply missions. This docking system is crucial for the progress of the Artemis mission. During crewed missions, two flights will occur. SpaceX's Starship HLS and NASA's SLS rocket carrying the Orion spacecraft. The crew will initially be in Orion aboard the SLS rocket, which will rendezvous in lunar orbit and then transfer to the Starship HLS for landing. After completing their mission, they will be launched again by the Starship HLS fly close to Orion, return to the capsule, and head back to Earth. These processes are all incredibly significant and can greatly impact the mission's success. The recent test has brought positive strides for SpaceX and NASA, dispelling doubts about the Starship development progress from SpaceX. Hopefully, both agencies will continue to make the best. Preparations for this historic mission now more than ever, it's crucial that all of these problems are resolved promptly, so that operations on the space station can proceed safely for the remaining time before its official retirement at the end of this decade. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time.